Hi, I'm Sharon Hales. Welcome to another edition of Foothills Finds. Today I'm in Glendale, California at 600 South Central Avenue in a place of incredible historic significance. And most people, not even the local residents, know that it's here. I'm in the American Heritage Library and Museum, which is provided by the Sons of the Revolution in the state of California. And it has the largest collection of holdings west of the Mississippi relating to the American Revolution and American history in general. And I'm joined today by Richard Breithaupt, Rick we call him, and he is the President Emeritus of the Sons of Revolution and the current director of the library. Rick, thank you so much for joining us here We're today. We're glad to have you here. Thank you. And I'm really excited to hear the stories, what you have to tell us about what is within these walls. Mm -hmm. And so tell me just briefly the history of the Sons of Revolution and how it came to be affiliated with this sure. museum. Uh, the Sons of Revolution in the state of California was founded in 1893. Uh, and it's composed of members who are descendants of uh, soldiers who fought in the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. And at that time, of course, California was, uh, you know, re relatively young state. Uh, the city of Los Angeles had maybe 5,000 residents, so it was a very small, almost Hamlet mm -hmm. type community. To grow the membership, they had to have people be able to prove their lineage uh, all the way back to the American Revolution. Well, there was no internet, no, you know, nothing here. So they started importing books out by rail car uh, in the 1890s and set up a small library in a law office in downtown Los Angeles. And by 1900, that grew to a collection of about 5,000 books. And by the 1920s, it was up to about 20,000 books. And today, we have over 30,000 titles here. Uh, we built our first building in downtown Los Angeles. It was a replica of Independence Hall. And it opened in the 1920s, fully supported and funded uh, by the community. And it's no longer there. It's no longer there. It was down in uh, what we now today call Bunker Hill. And in the early 1960s, during uh, what's known as the Bunker Hill redevelopment, some 13 to 1,600 structures were taken by eminent domain. So the government came in, required you to move, they compensated you for that. And so we moved out here, and we've been at this location since 1974. Well, before you give us a tour of this facility, I want to know how many volunteers there are and what sorts of activities you hold here. Oh, sure. Uh, well, we have, first of all, about 350 members of our organization. So those are people that have proven their lineage back to the American Revolution. And uh, between uh, them and uh, their spouses or whatever, uh, I would say during the course of a year, we have about 100 volunteers. Some of them come here to volunteer at the library, others in other community activities that we uh, participate in. An example of that is each February we have what we call the George Washington Reception. Very fun. Uh, which is on President's Day, uh, commemorating the birth of uh, George Washington. And is that open to the public? It's open to the public, and we have uh, a full spread of a meal, uh, and we also feature Fish House Punch, uh, which was George Washington's favorite drink. No fish in it, right? No fish, okay. but a lot of liquor. Okay. <laughs> So when people come here to do research, they have to stay here. They can't take the books out, right? Right. This is what's known as a reference library. Mm -hmm. It's not a circulating library. So what is in here stays here, and uh, people uh, will come in and do their research. They can go online before coming here, and uh, we have a complete electronic catalog that they could have already searched through to see if there's a particular title that's in this library. We are a member of OCLC, which is a, the Worldwide Library Consortium. And so our, our uh, catalog is also online and available at any library. Wow, what a great resource. Yep. Well, Rick, I know you have an incredible collection of photographs. And so can you pick out some of your favorites and tell us Sure, about let's them? go over and take a look okay. at a few. Rick, tell us about these photographs of some very handsome gentlemen waving their hats. Sure. Uh, we're blessed with several uh, historic photo collections. And, and one of them is about our original building which was a replica of Independence Hall in downtown Los Angeles. So as we were talking earlier, uh, we had a groundbreaking for the building in the, in the 1920s. And it, here's a picture of the groundbreaking. And, it, and in that picture are the Episcopal Bishop of Los Angeles, the president of Bank of America, uh, a future president of the American Medical Association, very prominent people of the day who were all members of our organization. The Sons of the Revolution. Sons of the Revolution, mm -hmm. that's correct. 
And I know you have photographs relating to Glendale specifically. Yes, uh, another uh, collection we have uh, in the 1920s, uh, the society uh, hired a, a professional portrait photographer and he took pictures of all of our members. And many of these were the original founders of the old Adams district. Uh, many of those historic homes are downtown. And, and uh, we were kind of excited uh, about 10 years ago when that historical society came running over here having just learned that this collection of photographs existed because it was many of the original landowners and they had never seen them. And one of those, uh, or two of those, are right here. Uh, one of our early members uh, is probably recognizable to most people in the Glendale Pasadena area. This is Henry Huntington. He was uh, not only a member of our society, but was very active in, in the establishment of the first library, which of course is interesting given uh, the library that has grown since in San Marino. Rick, I understand that you're also affiliated with the Daughters of the American Revolution. Yes, our, our facility is really the hub of uh, the, uh, or all the hereditary societies uh, in this area. And so we have many of the ladies' organizations, like the Daughters of the American Revolution, the Daughters of the Cincinnati, and uh, the Men's Society mm -hmm. of the Cincinnati as well. Uh, on the wall here, this is a picture of uh, Old Glory, which, of course, uh, everyone recognizes from the... Uh, uh, circular stars uh, at the time of the American Revolution, the Betsy Ross flag. Uh, this particular flag was made probably around the time of the Civil War uh, at, at, in commemoration of the American Revolution and was given to us by the Daughters of the American Revolution. Wow. Well, Rick, it seems like a centerpiece of the library is this really handsome portrait overhead. Who is this? Yes, this is John C. Fremont, the Pathfinder. Uh, this actually was o owned by John Fremont, who was the first Republican candidate for President of the United States in 1856. He was also the first United States Senator representing the state of California. During the uh, Civil War, uh, w there was an incident called the draft riots, uh, the Manhattan draft riots, New York draft riots. At that time, uh, the Fremonts were living in, in Manhattan. The portrait was on display at the Union Club, uh, downtown Manhattan when it received a bullet uh, from the uh, Aaron soldiers marching down the street shooting their guns. So and a drive-by shooting. A drive-by shoot. That's an early drive-by shooting. <laughs> uh, and upon a close examination, they discovered that all the threads in the fabric were melted. And so whether it was a hot poker or a bullet, you can take your pick. But the evidence is circumstantial, but we're tending to think it might have been the I, bullet. I think so, because it was hanging high on a wall. And it's a better story. It is. <laughs> As people enter the library and museum, they can't help but notice these beautiful flags. Rick, what's the significance of these colorful flags? These flags are all replicas of, of flags that originally flew during the American Revolution. Each of the colonies had their own flags, some of the regimental flags, things of that nature. Rick, these display shelves have very interesting artifacts. What are some of the favorites of yours? Yes, what we have in these cases here on this side are actual artifacts from the uh, colonial era in the American Revolution. And so we have an original period pistol, uh, a powder, uh, powder horn mm -hmm. where you, know, you would keep your powder, documents, keys, spectacles. Um, here's a uh, cannonball. They weren't wow. as large then as you might have imagined them to be. No. Rick, thank you so much for joining me today. You're just a fount of knowledge, and I understand you've written eight books. Yes, uh, yes, I have, uh, on the American Revolution, the Mexican War, and other topics. And uh, if people would like more information about you or about the library and museum, how can they find out more? Yeah, we have a website, www.srcalifornia, that's S-R-C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A dot com. And again, we're open to the public. You don't have to be a member. You can go to our website and to find out our hours, uh, as well as access our electronic catalog. There's also a virtual uh, display of the uh, museum here that you can look at. Well, thank you so much. I've learned so much, and now I'm excited to come back again. We're glad you could be with us. And thank you for joining me today on Foothills Finds. For more information about me or to contact me or to see my Foothills Finds videos, go to SharonHales.com. And I'll see you next time on Foothills Finds.